uh, stand fast in the things that we have to do and won't be won over by the conversation of, uh, of wicked people, that we'll get off in the things that are... Uh, that'll make us have some very, very serious problems in this country. And as a people, we've had enough problems as it is, and we do not need uh, uh, Massa breathing down our neck because of our, uh, our, uh, our wicked ways. But see, this is why Yahweh Elohim gave us the divine culture that he gave us. Because he told us, say, this is your wisdom, your knowledge, and your understanding among all the nations. And all the nation that see you, you do these things, all the nation that see you will say, uh, what? look at these people here, they're so great. Have laws, statutes, and judgments so just, and Yahweh their Elohim so near unto them. And truly we need to have our Creator near to us in these final days because Lucifer is doing his job. He's taking care of his business and he don't give a damn about you, me, Yahweh, or nobody else. What his job is, is to try to make Yahweh a lie and, and to keep Yahweh from doing the things that he wants to do. And so far, when you look at our condition in this country here, we can very well see that Lucifer has been on this case and he's been doing a doggone good job. The problem is we've been given ways to defeat him. And we refuse uh, many times to use those ways. And this is what has caused us problems from day one. And will cause us problems even to up until the time that the Mashiach returns to this earth. This is the reason why two parts of our people is going to be cut off and die. But then that's another story altogether. <coughs> so Brother Steve, read the office of the church and invite him who stands at the door that he may come in and sup with us and us with him that we may continue to read out of this legacy and consider what we read because Yahweh is on the move and we see it and we know that he meant just what he said. I'm going to read the oracles of the church beginning at 1 Peter chapter 4 verses 7 through 11. But the end of all things is at hand. Be you therefore sober and watch unto prayer. And above all things, have fervent love among yourselves. For love shall cover the multitude of sin. Praise God. Use hospitality one to another without grudging. As every man hath received a gift, even so minister the same one to another as good stewards of the manifold grace of Elohim. If any man speak, let him speak as the oracles of Elohim. If any man minister, let him do it as of the ability which Elohim giveth, that Elohim in all things may be glorified through Yeshua, the Mashiach, to whom be praise and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 29. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers, and grieve not the Holy Spirit of Elohim, whereby you are sealed unto the day of redemption. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. And be you kind one to another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, even as Elohim, for the Mashiach's sake, have forgiven you. Be you therefore followers of Elohim as their children, and walk in love, as the Mashiach also have loved us, and have given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to Elohim for a sweet-smelling savor. But fornication and all uncleanness, all covetousness, let it not be once named among you as become a saints. Neither filthiness, nor foolish talking, nor jesting, which are not convenient, but rather giving of thanks. Revelations chapter tw 3, verses 20 through 22. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come into him and will sup with him and he with me. To him that overcometh 
will I grant to sit with me in my throne, even as I also overcame, and am set down with my Father in his throne. He that have an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says unto the churches. Praise God. He that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the church and hold a convention. I like to uh, start our sermon today in the book of Malachi. Malachi chapter 2, in verse 1 through verse 17. Malachi chapter 2, in verse 1 through verse 17. Verse 1. And now, O you priests, this commandment is for you. Now, I understand that Yahweh told us that uh, we would be a kingdom of priests, right? Right. So you're talking to your brothers, right? Yes, sir. Okay, go ahead. Verse 2. If you will not hear, and if you will not lay it to heart, to give glory unto my name, says Yahweh of hosts, I will even send a curse upon you, and I will curse your blessings. Yea, I have cursed them already. Because you do not lay it to heart. Right. Yahweh gives us the things we need, you see. And those are the blessings, right? But then what do we do? We turn around and don't do what we're supposed to do. Uh, we let things come out of our mouth, and we don't keep up with those things. And then what happens? We end up turning that blessing into a curse, don't we? Okay. Go ahead, brother. Verse 3. Because then the things of that blessing eat us up alive. Go ahead, brother. Verse 3, Behold, I will corrupt your seed and spread dung upon your faces, even the dung of your soul and feast, and one shall take you away with it. Hmm. And you shall know that I have sent this commandment unto you, that my covenant might be with Levi, says Yahweh of hosts. My covenant was with him of life and peace, and I gave them to him for the field wherewith he feared me and was afraid before my name. The law of truth was in his mouth, and iniquity was not found in his lips. He walked with me in peace and equity and did turn away many from iniquity. Mm -hmm. For the priest's lips should keep knowledge, and they should seek the law at his mouth. For he is the messenger of Yahweh of hosts. Praise God. But you are departed out of the way. You have caused many to stumble at the law. You have corrupted the covenant of Levi, says Yahweh of hosts. Well, this is the way I see that. Mm -hmm. Right. Go ahead, brother. Verse 9. Therefore have I also made you contemptible and base before all the people, according as you have not kept my ways, but have been partial in the law. Mm -hmm. Have we not all one Father? Have not one Elohim created us? Why do we deal treacherously every man against his brother by profaning the covenant of our fathers? Mm -hmm. Yehuda have dealt treacherously, and an abomination is committed in Israel and in Jerusalem. For Yehuda have profaned the holiness of Yahweh, which he loved, and have married the daughter of a strange God. Has he didn't say has married uh, the wife of a strange God. He said you married the daughter of a strange God, right? Go ahead, bro. Malachi chapter 2, verse 12. Then Yahweh will cut off the man that does this, the master and the scholar out of the tabernacles of Yaakov and him that offers an offering unto Yahweh of hosts. Mm -hmm. And this have you done again, covering the altar of Yahweh with tears, with weeping, and with crying out, insomuch that he regards not the offering anymore or receives it with goodwill at your hands. Yet we still offer offerings, sacrifices and offerings uh, uh, to Yahweh of hosts, don't we? Go ahead, brother. Verse 14, yet you say, wherefore, because Yahweh have been witness between you and the wife of your youth, against whom you have dealt treacherously, yet is she your companion and the wife of your covenant. Mm -hmm. 
And did not he make one? Yes, had he the residue of the spirit. Excuse me. Not that old. Verse 15. And did not he make one? Yet had he the residue of the spirit. And wherefore one? That he might seek a godly seed. Mm -hmm. Therefore take heed to your spirit and let none deal treacherously against the wife of his youth. The wife of our youth to the churches. Go ahead, brother. Verse 16. For Yahweh, the Elohim of Israel, says that he hate of putting away. For one covers violence with his garment, says Yahweh of hosts. Therefore take heed to your spirit that you deal not treacherously. You have wearied Yahweh with your words, yet you say, wherein have we wearied him? When you say, everyone that does evil is good in the sight of Yahweh, and he delights in them, or where is the ale of judgment? Okay, my brother, Esaias chapter 57 and verse 1 through verse 21. Esaias chapter 57 and verse 1 through verse 21. Verse 1, the righteous perisheth, and no man left it to heart, and merciful men are taken away, none considering that the righteous is taken away from the evil to come. He shall enter into peace, they shall rest in their beds, each one walking in his uprightness. But draw near hither, you sons of the sorceress, the seed of the adulterer, and the whore. Against whom do you sport yourselves? Against whom make your wide mouth and draw out the tongue? Are you not children of transgression, a seed of falsehood, inflaming yourself with idols under every green tree, slaying the children in the valleys under the clefts of the rocks? Among the smooth stones of the stream is your portion. They, they are your lot. Even to them have you poured a drink offering. You have offered a meat offering. Should I receive comfort in these? Mm -hmm. Upon a lofty and high mountain have you set your bed. Even there you went up to offer sacrifice. Behind the doors also and the posts have you set up your remembrance. Mm -hmm. For you have discovered yourself to another than me and are gone up. Mm -hmm. You have enlarged your bed and made your covenant with them. You love their bed where you saw it. Mm -hmm. And you went to the king with ointment and did increase your perfumes and did send your messengers far off and did debase yourself even unto hell. Mm. You are wearied in the greatness of your way. Yet said of thou not, there is no hope. You have found the life of your hand. Therefore, you are not grieved. Mm -hmm. And of whom have you been afraid or feared that you have lied and have not remembered me, nor laid it to your heart. Have not I held my peace even of old, and thou fearest me not? I will declare thy righteousness and thy works, for they shall not profit thee. When thou criest, let thy companies deliver thee, but the wind shall carry them all away. Vanity shall take them, but he that puts his trust in me shall possess the land and shall inherit my holy mountain and shall say, cash you up, cash you up, prepare the way, take up the stumbling block out of the way of my people. Mm -hmm. For thus says the high and lofty one that inhabits eternity, whose name is holy, I dwell in the high and holy place with him also that is of a contrite and humble spirit, to revive the spirit of the humble and to revive the heart of the contrite one. Praise God. For I will not contend forever, neither will I be always angry. For the spirit shall fail before me and the souls which I have made. For the iniquity of his covetousness was I angry and smote him. I hid me and was angry, and he went on forwardly in the way of his heart. Hmm. I have seen his ways and will heal him. 
I will lead him also and restore comforts unto him and to his mourners. I create the fruit of the lips, mm. peace, peace to him that is far, and to him that is near, says Yahweh, and I will heal him. But the wicked are like the troubled sea when it cannot rest, mm. whose waters cast up mire and dirt. There is no peace, says my Elohim, to the wicked. Praise Yah. Chapter 56 and verse 1 through verse 12. Verse 1. Thus says Yahweh, keep your judgment and do justice, for my salvation is near to come and my righteousness to be revealed. Blessed is the man that doeth this, and the son of man that lays hold on it, that keepeth the Shabbat from polluting it, and keepeth his hand from doing any evil. Neither let the son of the stranger that have joined himself to Yahweh speak, saying, Yahweh have utterly separated me from his people. Neither let the eunuch say, Behold, I am a dry tree. Hmm. But thus says Yahweh unto the eunuchs that keep my Shabbats, and choose the things that please me, and take hold of my covenant, even unto them will I give in my house and within my walls a place and name better than of sons and of daughters. I will give them an everlasting name that shall not be cut off. Uh -huh. Also the sons of the stranger that join themselves to Yahweh to serve him and to love the name of Yahweh, to be his servants, everyone that keepeth the Shabbat from polluting it, and take a hold of my covenant, even them will I bring to my holy mountain and make them joyful in my house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and their sacrifices shall be accepted upon mine altar, for mine house shall be called a house of prayer for all people. The Adonai Elohim, which gathers the outcast of Israel, says, Yet will I gather others to him beside those that are gathered unto him. Mm -hmm. All you beasts of the field come to devour. Yea, all ye beasts in the forest. His watchmen are blind. They are all ignorant. They are all dumb dogs. They cannot bark, sleeping, lying down, loving to slumber. Yea, they are greedy dogs which can never have enough, and they are shepherds that cannot understand. They all look to their own way, and everyone for his gain from his quarter. Come you, say they, I will fetch wine, and we will fill ourselves with strong drinks, and tomorrow shall be as this day, and much more abundant. Praise Yah. From the time that Yahweh Elohim chose and separated our fathers from the nations to himself, our fathers have always preferred to walk in the ways of the heathen that uh, walk in the imagination uh, uh, of the freedoms of the heart. Mm -hmm. During the transatlantic slave trade, our fathers in Haiti used voodoo, uh, learned from Ham, to defeat the French and drive them from off the island. Mm -hmm. Voodoo was the same religion that Yehuda brought to New Orleans and to the Carolinas. Mm -hmm. But the masses of ex-slaves chose to become Christians. Mm -hmm. And now, we've conformed to Islam and exotic religions of men. Today, because Jake choose to walk in the ways uh, of those alienated from Yahweh Elohim, it's impossible to see or uh, hear us and acknowledge us as the seed that Yahweh Elohim has blessed uh, to be his ambassadors because of personal interpretation of our culture and of our instruction. The ways given to our fathers is the righteousness of the Almighty of Israel. But Jake was never satisfied uh, with Yahweh's ways because they restricted Jake from doing what Jake desired. Mm -hmm. Therefore, Yahweh gave them up to the unclean, uh, unclean thoughts rather of their minds. Why? Because their bodies were in uh, Yahweh's holy land, but their minds were on the other side of the world. Mm -hmm. Seeing that our fathers married themselves to a strange god uh, uh, of the nations, whether their gods uh, were male or female, and according to the law, a woman who revealed her nakedness, which belongs to her husband, to any 
uh, other, whether male or female, Yahweh gave his whorish, uh, despiteful, and rebellious wife uh, a bill of divorcement. Mm -hmm. And the holy law that was taught to them uh, 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 taught them how to completely abase themselves. Mm -hmm. Then Yahweh caused her lovers uh, who secretly hated her to rob her of her wealth, strip her of her beautiful garments given to cover her defiled nakedness, and her lovers cast Israel captives among Lucifer's children. Mm -hmm. But Yehuda still reigned with Yahweh Elohim until the Mashiach, the promised seed, came and confirmed uh, the new covenant with the children of the bride, and the fathers had uh, uh, had the ambassador of Yahweh Elohim murdered. Mm -hmm. As a result, the ruling tribe of Yehuda, Benjamin that was given to Yehuda, and the priestly tribe of Levi, Yahweh's spokesman, <coughs> were cast into slavery among her wicked lovers of Africa and the newly found Americas. Mm -hmm. But before Yudu, Yehuda was cast out of the Holy Land, Yahweh Elohim chose a remnant mm -hmm. of his bride's children and sent them into uh, Europe into uh, the den of, of the beast bearing gifts. Mm -hmm. And one day, the children of the spirit would teach the gospel to all the seed that is remaining upon, uh, uh, upon the earth at Yahshua's return. Even though they've evil entreated us, they, they, they were given up to this simply because Yahweh has his own way of chastening his people. Uh, Jeremiah chapter 29 and verse 11 through chapter 33 and verse 26. <clears throat> Yermiyahu chapter 29 and verse 11 through chapter 33 and verse uh, 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 26. <clears throat> verse 11. For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, says Yahweh, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. <clears throat> then shall you call upon me, and you shall go and pray unto me, and I will hearken unto Praise you. Yah. And you shall seek me and find me when you shall search for me with all your heart. And I will be found of you, says Yahweh, and I will turn away your captivity, and I will gather you from all the nations and from all the places whither I have driven you, says Yahweh, and I will bring you again into the place whence I caused you to be carried away captive. Because you have said, Yahweh have raised us up prophets in Iraq, know that thus says Yahweh of the king that sits upon the throne of Dawid, and of all the people that dwells in this city, and of your brethren that are not going forth with you into captivity, thus says Yahweh of hosts, Behold, I will send upon them the sword, the famine, and the pestilence, and will make them like vile figs that cannot be eaten. They are so evil. And I will persecute them with the sword, with the famine, and with the pestilence, and will deliver them to be removed to all the kingdoms of the earth, to be a curse and an astonishment and a hissing and a reproach among all the nations, whither I have driven them, because they have not hearkened to my words, says Yahweh, which I sent unto them by my servants the prophets, rising up early and sending them, but you would not hear, says Yahweh. Okay, my brother, uh, go to uh, chapter 30 and uh, 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 verse 1 there for me. <clears throat> Yahweh, chapter 30, verse 1. The word that came to Yahu from Yahweh, saying, Thus speak of Yahweh Elohim of Israel, saying, Write thee all the words that I have spoken unto thee in a book. For lo, the days come, says Yahweh, that I will bring again the captivity of my people Israel and Yehuda, says Yahweh, and I will cause them to return to the land that I gave to their fathers, and they shall possess it. Now that's what you call true love. Mm -hmm. See? Hit his bride. Has, has lain in the bed with everybody. Mm -hmm. And Yahweh caught her. Mm -hmm. 
See? And then what did he say? He said, For lo, the days come, saith Yahweh, that I will bring again the captivity of my people, Israel and Judah, saith Yahweh, and I will cause them to return to the land that I gave to their fathers, and they shall possess it. Regardless of what she does, see, I'm going to save them children. Go ahead and read, brother. Yes, sir. Verse 4. And these are the words that Yahweh spake concerning Israel and concerning Yehuda. But thus says Yahweh, we have heard a voice of trembling, of fear, and not of peace. Ask you now, and see whether a man doth travail with child. Why do I see every man with his hands on his arms as a woman in travail, and all faces are turned into paleness? Alas! For that day is great, so that none is like it. It is even the time of Jacob's trouble, but he shall be saved out of it. But it shall come to pass in that day, says Yahweh of hosts, that I will break his yoke from off your neck and will burst your bonds, and strangers shall no more serve themselves of him. But they shall serve Yahweh their Elohim and David their king, whom I will raise up unto them. Therefore, fear thou not, O my servant Jacob, says Yahweh, neither be dismayed, O Israel, for lo, I will save thee from afar, and thy seed from the land of their captivity, and Jacob shall return, and shall be in rest, and be quiet, and none shall make him afraid. Mm -hmm. For I am with thee, says Yahweh, to save thee, Though I make a full end of all nations, whether I have scattered thee, yet will I not make a full end of thee, but I will correct thee in measure, and will not leave thee altogether unpunished. You're right. We're going to read what we saw now. Let's understand that. Go ahead, brother. Verse 12. But thus says Yahweh, thy bruise is incurable, and thy wound is grievous. There is none to plead thy cause, that thou mayest be bound up. Thou hast no healing medicines. All thy lovers have forgotten thee. They seek thee not. For I have wounded thee with the wound of an enemy, with the chastisement of a cruel one, for the multitude of thine iniquity, because thy sins were increased. Why cry thou for thine affliction? Thy sorrow is incurable for the multitude of thine iniquity. Because thy sins were increased, I have done these things unto thee. Therefore all they that devour thee shall be devoured, and all thine adversaries, every one of them, shall go into captivity. And they that spoil thee shall be a spoil, and all that prey upon thee will I give for a prey. For I will restore health unto thee, and I will heal thee of thy wounds, says Yahweh, because they called thee an outcast, saying, This is Zion, whom no man seeketh after. Hmm. Thus says Yahweh, Behold, I will bring again the captivity of Jacob's tents, and have mercy on his dwelling places, and the city shall be built upon her own heap, and the palace shall remain after the manner of thereof. And out of them shall proceed thanksgiving, and the voice of them that make merry. And I will multiply them, and they shall not be few. I will also glorify them, and they shall not be small. Their children also shall be as aforetime, and their congregation shall be established before me, and I will punish all that oppress them. And their nobles shall be of themselves, and their governor shall proceed from the midst of them. And I will cause him to draw near, and he shall approach unto me, for who is this that engaged his heart to approach unto me, says Yahweh. Right. Who is this that has engaged his heart to approach unto me? Go ahead, brother. Verse 22. And you shall be my people, and I will be your Elohim. Why? Because you sought Yahweh Elohim, and because you engaged your heart to, to approach unto him. In other words, you learn how to walk humbly and justly before our Creator. Go ahead, brother. Verse 23. 
Behold, the whirlwind of Yahweh going forth with fury, a continuing whirlwind. It shall fall with pain upon the head of the wicked. The fierce anger of Yahweh shall not return until he have done it and until he have performed the intents of his heart in the latter days you shall consider it. Mm -hmm. At the same time, says Yahweh, will I be the Elohim of all the families of Israel and they shall be my people. Thus says Yahweh, the people which were left of the sword found grace in the wilderness, even Israel, when I went to cause them to rest. Yahweh have appeared of old unto me, saying, Yea, I have loved thee with an everlasting love. Therefore, with love and kindness have I drawn thee. Again, I will build thee, and thou shalt be built, O virgin of Israel. Thou shalt again be adorned with thy tabrets, and shall go forth in the dances of them that make merry. Praise Thou God. shalt yet plant vines upon the mountains of Samaria. The planter shall plant, and shall eat them as common things. For there shall be a day that the watchmen upon the Mount Ephraim shall cry, Arise ye, and let us go up to Zion unto Yahweh our Elohim. But thus says Yahweh, Sing with gladness for Yaakov, and shout among the chief of the nations, publish you, praise you, and say, O Yahweh, save your people, the remnant of Israel. Mm -hmm. Behold, I will bring them from the north country and gather them from the coast of the earth, and with them the blind and the lame, the woman with child, and her that travail with child together, a great company shall return thither. They shall come with weeping, and with supplications will I lead them. I will cause them to walk by the rivers of waters in a straight way, wherein they shall not stumble. For I am a father to Israel, and Ephraim is my firstborn. Hear the word of Yahweh, O you nations, and declare it in the isles of far off, and say, He that scattered Israel will gather him and keep him as a shepherd does his flock. For Yahweh had redeemed Yaakov and ransomed him from the hand of him that was stronger than he. Therefore they shall come and sing in the height of Zion and shall flow together to the goodness of Yahweh for wheat and for wine and for oil and for the young of the flock and of the herd. And their soul shall be as a watered garden and they shall not sorrow anymore at all. Mm -hmm. Then shall the virgin rejoice in the dance both young men and old together. For I will turn their mourning into joy and will comfort them and make them rejoice from their sorrow. And I will saturate the soul of the priest with fatness and my people shall be satisfied with my goodness, says Yahweh. Thus says Yahweh, a voice was heard in Ramah, lamentation and bitter weeping. Rachel weeping for her children, refused to be confident for her children, because they were not. Thus says Yahweh, refrain your voice from weeping and your eyes from tears, for your work shall be rewarded, says Yahweh, and they shall come again from the land of the enemy. And there is hope in thine end, says Yahweh, that thy children shall come again to their own border. I have surely heard Ephraim bemoaning himself thus, Thou have chastised me, and I was chastised as a bullock unaccustomed to the yoke. Turn thou me, and I shall be turned, for you are Yahweh my Elohim. Surely after that I was turned, I repented, and after that I was instructed, I smote upon my thigh, I was ashamed, yea, even oh, confounded, because I did bear the reproach in my youth. Come out here in the sanctuary and sit is Ephraim my dear son? Is he a pleasant child? But since I spake against him, I do earnestly remember him still. Therefore my bowels are troubled for him. I will surely have mercy upon him, says Yahweh. Set thee up waymarks. Make thee high heaps. Set thine heart toward the highway, even the way which thou wentest. Turn again, O virgin of Israel. Turn again to these thy cities. 
How long will you go about, oh, you backsliding daughter? For Yahweh have created a new thing in the earth. A woman shall compass a man. Mm -hmm. Thus says Yahweh of hosts, the Elohim of Israel. As yet they shall use this speech in the land of Yehuda and in the cities thereof, when I shall bring again their captivity, Yahweh bless thee, O habitation of justice and mountain of holiness. And there shall dwell in Yehuda itself and in all the cities thereof together farmers and they that go forth with flocks. For I have saturated the weary soul and I have replenished every sorrowful soul. Upon this I wait and behold, and my sleep was sweet unto me. Behold, the days come, says Yahweh, that I will sow the house of Israel and the house of Yehuda with the seed of man and with the seed of beast. And it shall come to pass that like as I have watched over them to pluck up and to break down and to throw down and to destroy and to afflict, so will I watch over them to build and to plant, says Yahweh. Mm -hmm. In those days they shall say no more, the fathers have eaten of sour grape and the children's teeth are set on edge. But everyone shall die for his own iniquity. Every man that eateth of the sour grape, his teeth shall be set on edge. Behold, the days come, says Yahweh, that I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Yehuda, not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day that I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, which my covenant they broke, although I was an husband unto them, says Yahweh. But this shall be the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. After those days, says Yahweh, I will put my law in their inward parts and write it in their hearts and will be their Elohim and they shall be my people. And they shall teach no more every man his neighbor and every man his brother saying, No Yahweh, for they shall all know me from the least of them unto the greatest of them, says Yahweh, for I will forgive their iniquity, and I will remember their sin no more. Thus says Yahweh, which giveth the sun for light by day, and the ordinances of the moon and of the stars for light by night, which divideth the sea when the waves thereof roar, Yahweh of hosts is his name. If those ordinances depart from before me, says Yahweh, then the seed of Israel also shall cease from being a nation before me forever. Thus says Yahweh, if heaven above can be measured and the foundation of the earth search out beneath, I will also cast off all the seed of Israel for all that they have done, says Yahweh. Behold, the days come, says Yahweh, that the city shall be built to Yahweh from the tower of Hananiel unto the gate of the corner. And the measuring line shall yet go forth over against it upon the hill Garel, and shall compass about to go at. And the whole valley of the dead bodies and of the ashes and all the fields unto the brook of Kidron unto the corner of the horse gate toward the east shall be holy unto Yahweh. It shall not be plucked up nor thrown down any more. Forever. Okay, brother, chapter 32 and verse 26. Pick that up at verse 26 and 32. <clears throat> verse, Yeremiah chapter 32, verse 26. <clears throat> then came the word of Yahweh unto Yahweh Yahu, saying, Behold, I am Yahweh, the Elohim of all flesh. Is that anything too hard for me? Therefore, thus says Yahweh, Behold, I will give this city into the hand of the Chaldeans and into the hand of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Iraq, and he shall take it. <clears throat> and the Chaldeans that fight against this city shall come and set fire on this city and burn it with the houses upon whose roof they have offered incense unto Baal and poured out drink offerings unto other gods to provoke me to anger. Hmm. For the children of Israel and the children of Yehuda have only done evil before me from their youth. Hmm. 
For the children of Israel have only provoked me to anger with the work of their hands, says Yahweh. For this city have been to me as a provocation of mine anger and of my fury from the day that they built it, even hmm. until this day, that I should remove it from before my face because of all the evil of the children of Israel and of the children of Yehuda, which they have done to provoke me to anger, they, their kings, their princes, their priests, their prop and their prophets, and the men of Yehuda, and the inhabitants of Jerusalem. And they have turned unto me the back and not the face. Though I taught them, rising up early and teaching them, yet they have not hearkened to receive instruction. And they set their abominations in the house, which is called by my name, to defile it. And they built the high places of Baal, which are in the valley of the son of Hinnon, to cause their sons and their daughters to pass through the fire unto Molech, which I commanded them not, neither came it into my mind that they should do this abomination to cause Yehuda to sin. And now, therefore, thus says Yahweh, the Elohim of Israel, concerning this city, whereof you say, it shall be delivered into the hand of the king of Iraq by the sword and by the famine and by the pestilence. Behold, I will gather them out of all countries, whither I have driven them in my anger and in my fury and in great wrath, and I will bring them again unto this place and I will cause them to dwell safely. And they shall be my people, and I will be their Elohim, and I will give them one heart and one way that they may fear me forever for the good of them and of their children after them. And I will make an everlasting covenant with them that I will not turn away from them to do them good. But I will put my fear in their hearts that they shall not depart from me. Yea, I will rejoice over them to do them good, and I will plant them in this land assuredly with my whole heart and with my whole soul. For thus says Yahweh, like as I have brought all this great evil upon this people, so will I bring upon them all the good that I have promised them. And fields shall be bought in this land, whereof you say it is desolate without man or beast, it is given into the hand of the called in. Men shall buy fields for money and subscribe evidences and seal them and take witnesses in the land of Benjamin and in the places about Jerusalem and in the cities of Yehuda and in the cities of the mountains and in the cities of the valleys and in the cities of the south for I will cause that captivity to return says Yahweh. Verse 6, brother. <clears throat> Verse 6, brother. <clears throat> Behold, I will bring it down and cure, and I will cure them, and will reveal unto them the abundance of peace and truth. And I will cause the captivity of Yehuda and the captivity of Israel to return, and will build them as at the first. And I will cleanse them, and I will cleanse them, I'm sorry, from all their iniquity whereby they have sinned against me, and I will pardon all their iniquities, whereby they have sinned, and whereby they have transgressed against me. And it shall be to me a name of joy, a praise, and an honor before all the nations of the earth, which shall hear all the good that I do unto them, and they shall fear and tremble for all the goodness and for all the prosperity that I procure unto it. Thus says Yahweh, excuse me, Verse 10, thus says Yahweh, again that shall be heard in this place, which you say shall be desolate without man and without beast, even in the cities of Yehuda and in the streets of Jerusalem that are desolate without man and without inhabitant and without beast, the voice of joy and the voice of gladness, the voice of the bridegroom and the voice of the bride. The voice of them that shall say, Praise Yahweh of hosts. For Yahweh is good, for his mercy endure forever. And of them that shall bring the sacrifice of praise into the house of Yahweh. For I will cause to return the captivity of the land as at the first, 
says Yahweh. Praise Yahweh. Verse 12. Thus says Yahweh of hosts. Again in this place, which is desolate without man and without beast, and in all the cities thereof shall be a habitation of shepherds causing their flocks to lie down. In the cities of the mountains, in the cities of the vale, and in the cities of the south, and in the land of Benjamin, and in the places about Jerusalem, and in the cities of Yehuda, shall the flocks pass again under the hands of him that counts them, says Yahweh. Behold, the days come, says Yahweh, that I will perform that good thing which I have promised unto the house of Israel and to the house of Yehuda. Praise Yah. In those days and at that time will I cause the branch of righteousness to grow up unto thy weed, and he shall execute judgment and righteousness in the land. In those days shall Yehuda be saved, and Jerusalem shall dwell safely, and this is the name wherewith she shall be called Yahweh our righteousness. But thus says Yahweh, David shall never want a man to sit upon the throne of the house of Israel. Neither shall the priests, the Levites, want a man before me to offer burnt offerings and to kindle meat offerings and to do sacrifice continually. And the word of Yahweh came unto Yahweh, saying, Thus says Yahweh, If you can break my covenant of the day and my covenant of the night, and that there shall not be day and night in their season. Then may also my covenant be broken with thy weed, my servant, that he should not have a son to reign upon his throne and with the Levites, the priests, my ministers. Right. They've already said that Yahweh has broke that covenant because they tell me that the Queen of England, who is head of the Church of England, sits upon the throne of David. Mm -hmm. Yahweh said a man, and they telling me about some woman. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah, and I had to go show a brother that the other day. He was talking about the ark was over in Ethiopia, right? Mm -hmm. And went up there in Revelation and show him where the ark was seen. The ark of his covenant was seen in heaven. Mm -hmm. Brother had to go back and do a little more research on the deal, man. Of course, brother. Anytime, you, anytime you've been taught the word of truth, brother, and you study to show yourself approved, whatever people come up with that's not the truth, mm -hmm. then all you got to do is go open your book, and the word is of truth will prove them to be a liar. It's, it's witness for us, and it's witness against us. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> yeah, Go ahead and finish up, brother. Yahoo, chapter 33, verse 22. As the host of heaven cannot be numbered, neither the sand of the sea measured, so will I multiply the seed of David, my servant, and the Levites that minister unto me. Moreover, the word of Yahweh came to Yahoo, saying, Consider of thou not what this people have spoken, saying, The two families which Yahweh have chosen, he have even cast them off. Thus they have despised my people, that they should be no more a nation before them. Thus says Yahweh, If my covenant be not with day and night, and if I have not appointed the ordinances of heaven and earth, then will I cast away the seed of Jacob and David, my servant, so that I will not take any of his seed to be rulers over the seed of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, for I will cause their captivity to return and have mercy on them. Praise Yah. What well, let's do, let's go in here and see how Yahweh and He began to bring this thing about. <clears throat> now, 1 Corinthians 3, in verse 11 through verse 17. Let's see if we can bridge this, bridge these two, uh, uh, the past and the uh, present together. First uh, uh, Corinthians 3 and verse 11 through verse 17. You might have to read all the time about captivity and return. Then I said when you read that it was a servant, that is probably Egypt, so that's what he's really speaking about. You know, the servant, not the one about the captivity. Of course. Of course. Of course. Of course. Of course. Everybody think we serve to Yahweh or he's not in our Israel as Yahweh's servant. Israel has always been uh, Yahweh's service, and he will, he will. I mean, we understand that the Lucifer serves Yahweh too, but that don't mean that he's going to receive any kind of salvation, does it? 
only Yahweh's service is going to, the service that he chooses in these latter days is going to receive that salvation. This is why we get, we, we get back and read about the holy prophets and so forth and the holy men in the book. Those people didn't come on the scene by chance. Mm -hmm. And it's nothing that they wiggle their nose or grew into. What it was was Yahweh has chosen these things from the foundation of the earth. That's why you sitting here today. Mm -hmm. It ain't because of nothing we did that made us so good. I don't care how high and mighty we think we are. It's not that we so good uh, uh, before the, uh, the creator of all things. The thing of it is, is that his goodness is shown upon us by showing us the, uh, the road towards salvation and then giving us <coughs> the stamina to try to stay on that road. Because we know what's going on out there, man. We know what goes on, and we know the thoughts that goes on in our minds. Uh, uh, 1 Corinthians 3, and verse 11 through verse 17, brother. For other foundations can no man lay than that is laid, which is Yahshua Hamashiach. And what did he tell the prophets? Behold, I say, lay in Zion for a stone, a tried stone, a chief cornerstone. Okay, go ahead, brother. Verse 12. Now, if any man build upon this foundation gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, stubble, every man's work shall be made manifest. For the day shall declare it, because it shall be revealed by fire, and the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. Mm -hmm. If any man's work abide which he have built thereupon, he shall receive a reward. If any man's work shall be burned, he shall suffer loss, but he himself shall be saved, yet so is by fire. That fire is the great trials that come upon us in our day-to-day -day lives, right? Go ahead, brother. Verse 16. Know you not that you are the temple of Elohim, and that the spirit of Elohim dwelleth in you? Know you not that you are the temple of Elohim, and that the word of Elohim dwell in you? Go ahead, brother. Verse 17. If any man defile the temple of Elohim, him shall Elohim destroy. For the temple of Elohim is holy, which temple you are. Okay, my brother. Uh, 2 Corinthians 7 and verse 14 through verse 18. Right, right. Made us all made us evangelists, did yeah. Evangelists are raised up in captivity and in slavery, ain't it? Yeah. Right. Don't nobody want to hear nothing we say simply yeah. because we like Mike. Yeah. Second uh, Corinthians seven and verse fourteen through verse eighteen. <clears throat> Yes, sir. Verse 14. Wait a minute. It ain't 18. Verse 16, you got three verses. Yeah, brother, maybe I'm in the wrong doggone ch ch a chapter. Uh, let me, give me a minute. I'll tell you what, uh, yeah, I got to I gotta cover this. Give me a second here, y'all. That's what I get for doing classes with one of my eyes open. Uh, That ain't where I want to go either. Okay, okay. Now, I'll leave that off. I'll probably find it later on. I'll, <clears throat> I'll go back and see if I can. Uh, 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 now, I want to go uh, to 1 Corinthians 6 and pick that up at verse, uh, uh, verse 11 through verse 18, my brother. Oh, I know it happened. We uh, <laughs> we had a fire in the house last night, and I had to get up and go. We had to get up and go beat on that bad boy. <laughs> yeah, so I had to go get that thing under control before I got out of hand. We kept kept it under control, so you know, ain't too much. Ain't wasn't, wasn't nothing hardly lost, but the uh, hood over the stove. So. And my brother got a pretty good burn on his hand, but that's that's about it. But go ahead and uh, pick this up, my brother. First Corinthians, chapter six, verse eleven. And such were some of you, but you are washed, but you are sanctified, but you are justified in the name of the Adonai Yahshua 
and by the spirit of our Elohim. All things are lawful unto me, but all things are not expedient. All things are lawful for me, but I will not be brought under the power of any. Meats for the belly, and the belly for meats. But Elohim shall destroy both it and them. Now the body is not for fornication, but for the Adonai, and the Adonai for the body. And Elohim have both raised up the Adonai, and will also raise up us by his own power. Know you not that your bodies are the members of the Mashiach? Shall I then take the members of the Mashiach and make them the members of a harlot? Mm -hmm. Elohim forbid. What? Know you not that he which is joined to a harlot is one body? For two, says he, shall be one flesh. But he that is joined unto the Adonai is one spirit. Flee fornication. Every sin that a man does is without the body. But he that commits fornication sins against his own body. Okay, my brother. So you're not just talking about the natural fornication that we do. He's also talking about the spiritual fornication that we uh, 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 commit uh, while we in captivity uh, among the people of the nation. Now, according to Acts 2, in Romans chapter 2 and chapter 3, in Romans chapter 9 and uh, through chapter 11, Hebrews, uh, Hebrews 9 and 1 Peter 2nd uh, uh, chapter and St. John 4.22 and many of the holy prophets, the foundation of the church was laid by Yahshua among the Hebrews in the Holy Land. Mm -hmm. And after uh, 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 10 years, the children went into the Euro European Gentiles where the Israelite Saul laid a Hebrew foundation among the Gentiles chosen to be grafted into Israel's holy tree, right? Okay, now let's go into 1 Corinthians uh, uh, chapter 12, my brother. I, want, I think that's where I want to go. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, and pick that up at verse 1. Amen. First Corinthians chapter 12, verse 1. Now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I would not have you ignorant. You know that you were Euro Gentiles carried away unto these dumb idols, even as you were led. Wherefore, I give you to understand that no man speaking by the spirit of Elohim calls Yahshua a curse. And that no man can say that Yahshua is the Adonai, but by the Holy Ghost. Now there are diversities of gifts, but the same spirit. And there are differences of administrations, but the same Adonai. And there are diversities of operations, but it is the same Elohim which worketh all in all. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all. For to one is given by the Spirit the word of wisdom, to another the word of knowledge by the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another the gifts of healing by the same Spirit, to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another discerning of spirits, to another diverse kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues, but all these work of that one and the self-same spirit, dividing to every man severally as he will. For as the body is one, and have many members, and all the members of that one body, being many, are one body, so also is the Mashiach. For by one spirit are we all baptized into one body, whether we be Jews or Euro Gentiles, whether we be bond or free, and have been all made to drink into one spirit. For the body is not one member, but many. If the foot shall say, because I am not the hand, I am not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? And if the ear shall say, because I am not the eye, I am not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? 
If the whole body were an eye, where were the hearing? If the whole were hearing, where were the smelling? But now have Elohim set the members, every one of them in the body, as it have pleased him. <laughs> and if they were all one member, one member, I'm sorry, where were the body? But now are they many members, yet but one body? And the eye cannot say unto the hand, I have no need of thee, nor again the head to the feet, I have no need of you. Nay, much more those members of the body which seem to be more feeble are necessary and those members of the body which we think to be less honorable upon these we bestow more abundant honor and our uncomely parts have more abundant comeliness. Mm -hmm. For our comely parts have no need but Elohim have tempered the body together having given more abundant honor to that part which lacked that there should be no schism in the body, but that the members should have the same care one for another. Okay, my brother, I don't, uh, I, I don't want to uh, go no further than that. I just wanted to deal with uh, how I'm trying to deal with how <clears throat> Yahweh will bring this thing upon the nation. And once Yahshua sanctifies the foundation of church, there's but one spirit given, and all family members are nourished on that one spirit for unity. So Yahshua gives that specific body gifts to aid in the words, uh, 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 in the form of people. Yet the gifts of the Spirit don't truly belong to a soul as some seem to think. Although we utilize our talents to obtain wealth, and Yahweh provides and sustains our, as Yahweh provides and sustains our flesh, the same gift is given to the priest to guide in the works in Yahshua's body for edifying and are utilized by both men and women in accordance with, with what's written. <clears throat> but the Gentiles, a Roman, hate our people. And in 70 A.C.E., we, are, we know that the Euro Gentiles invaded uh, Mount Zion and destroyed Yehuda, Yahweh's uh, portion, down to a mere 97,000 people whom they sold unto the Africans. The same Hebrews... <coughs> The Africans sold to these murderous Christian European uh, immigrant Gentiles who now rules America, the Protestant daughter of the Roman Catholic Church, land of the goddess Liberty and home of Christians free enough to do what they are brave enough to do. Amen. And Jake loves it that way. Why? Because being raised up by Lucifer's children and being miseducated and taught how and what is good for Jake's pleasure, Jake's rebellion uh, for <coughs> integration shows just how far our people were willing to go uh, to become uh, a live-in bridesmaid uh, of the, uh, the Christian daughter of Revelation uh, chapter 17. This is why 99% of our sins are committed among uh, our enemies, knowing all the time that they are Yahweh's enemies. John chapter 5 and verse 1 through verse 47. <clears throat> St. John chapter 5 and verse 1 through verse this, there was a feast of the Jews, and Yahshua went up to Jerusalem. Now there is at Jerusalem by the sheep market a pool which is called in the Hebrew tongue Bethsaida, having five porches. In these lay a great multitude of impotent folk, a blind, halt, withered, waiting for the moving of the water. For an angel went down at a certain season into the pool, and troubled the water. Whosoever then first, after the troubling of the water, stepped in, was made whole of whatsoever disease he had. Uh, verse 5. And a certain man was there which had an infirmity thirty and eight years. When Yahshua saw him lie, 
and knew that he had been now a long time in that case, he says unto him, Will you be made whole? The impotent man answered him, Sir, I have no man when the water is troubled to put me into the pool. But while I am coming, another steps down before me. Yahshua says unto him, Rise, take up your bed, and walk. And immediately the man was made whole, and took up his bed, and walked, and on the same day was the Sabbath. Hmm. The Jews therefore said unto him that was cured, It is the Sabbath day. It is not lawful for you to carry your bed. He answered them, He that made me whole, the same said unto me, Take up thy bed and walk. Then asked they him, What man is that which said unto you, Take up your bed and walk? They don't even consider what's been done in Israel. The only thing they're concerned about is accusing somebody about breaking the law. Go ahead, bro. Yes, sir. Verse 13. And he that was healed knew not who it was. But Yahshua had conveyed himself away, a multitude being in that place. Afterward, Yahshua found him in the temple and said unto him, Behold, you are made whole. Sin no more, lest a worse thing come unto you. Look, behold, you come under the blood. You've been purified, right? Watch yourself, you know. Don't sin no more, lest a worse thing come unto you than it was before you came here. And we have, we have a good example of that. If y'all notice what's been going on, y'all look around. Y'all see we had a good, we, uh, we've been made witness of a good example of that this week. The brothers that was up here and saw what was going on, y'all will give you something. And then we misuse what we supposed to uh, 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 have and, and don't do what we supposed to do. The dog returns to his own vomit and the side that was washed to a water in the mouth. Go ahead and read, brother. Yohanan chapter 5, verse 15. The man departed and told the Jews that it was Yahshua which had made him whole. And therefore did the Jews persecute Yahshua and sought to slay him because he had done these things on the Sabbath day. But Yahshua answered them, My father worketh hitherto, and I work. Hmm. Therefore the Jews sought the more to kill him because he not had only because he not only had broken the Sabbath, but said also that Elohim was his father, making himself equal with Elohim. Yet they called him, they call uh, uh, Yahweh Father. Here, yeah, don't read, brother. Yeah, I don't know before you go on to, you know that whenever you read that, you know just how they put the law. And they don't get the categories. They read the Jews. They read that, but they don't understand the different sects of Jews. You got the Nazarenes, the Pharisees, the Sadducees, the Essenes, you know. Mm -hmm. But they want to make it look that the whole nation was against him. Like, you know, from the Christian beginning to Jews like that. You know? Yeah, I know, brother. Yeah, I know, brother. That's what Christians do when they get in here and read things like this. Talking about, well, see, all of y'all was against the Messiah. You know, we weren't there to hold the apostles of Jews. Mm -hmm. That's because they are departmentalized. I mean, yeah. got, like I said, what, 200 sect of the Christian faith. Of course, brother. They're always trying to make us like this. <laughs> Go ahead and read, Steve. Verse 19. Then answered Yahshua and said unto them, Yes, yes, I say unto you, the Son can do nothing of himself but what he seeth the Father do. For what things soever he doeth, these also doeth the Son likewise. For the Father... Loveth the Son, and showeth him all things that himself doeth, and he will show him greater works than these that you may marvel. For as the Father raises up the dead, and quickeneth them, even so the Son quickeneth whom he will. Mm -hmm. For the Father judgeth no man, but hath committed all judgment unto the <coughs> Son, that all men should honor the Son, even as they honor the Father. He that honoreth not the Son, honoreth not the Father, which have sent him. Yes, yes, I say unto you, he that heareth my word, and believeth on him that sent me, have everlasting life, and shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death unto life. Right, Lucifer believes. 
but believe according to what's written down. Go ahead, brother. Verse 25. Yes, yes, I say unto you, the hour is coming and now is, when the dead shall hear the voice of the Son of Elohim, and they that hear shall live. For as the Father have life in himself, so have he given to the Son to have life in himself, and have given him authority to execute judgment also, because he is the Son of Man. Hmm. Marvel not at this, for the hour is coming into which all that are in the grave shall hear his voice, and shall come forth, they that have done good unto the resurrection of life. And they that have done evil unto the resurrection of damnation. I can of mine own self do nothing. Mm. As I hear, I judge. And my judgment is just. Mm. Because I seek not mine own will, but the will of the Father which have sent me. Praise God. If I bear witness on myself, my witness is not true. Mm -hmm. There is another that bear witness on me. And I know that he witnessed which he, and I know that the witness which he witnesses of me is true. You sent unto Johanan, and he bow witness unto the truth. But I receive not testimony from man, but these things I say that you might be saved. He was a burning and a shining light, and you were willing for a season to rejoice in his life. Hmm. But I have greater witness than that of Johanna. For the works which the Father have given me to finish, the same works that I do bear witness of me that the Father have sent me. Mm -hmm. And the Father himself which have sent me have borne witness of me. You have neither heard his voice at any time nor seen his shape. Mm -hmm. And you have not his word abiding in you. For whom he have sent him you believe not. Mm -hmm. Search the law and the prophets, for in them you think you have eternal life, and they are they which testify me. And you will not come to me that you might receive life, might have life, I'm sorry. Verse 41, I receive not honor from men, but I know you that you have not the love of Elohim in you. I am come in my Father's name, and you receive me not. If another shall come in his own name, him you will receive. Mm -hmm. How can you believe which receive honor one of another and seek not the honor that comes from Elohim? Right, we love to praise the natural, uh, natural people. We love to be lauded by natural people. And for that, for that, and, and for that, 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 that torture that, that is within us, what do we do? We cast our spirit out before men any time we feel like it. Go ahead, brother. Yes, sir. Verse 45. Do not think that I will accuse you to the Father. There is one that accuses you, even Moshe, in whom you trust. For had you believed Moshe, you would have believed me. For he wrote of me. But if you believe not his writings, how shall you believe my words? Okay, my brother. Um, serving Yahweh Elohim is not just the things we do in utilizing the gifts we are and possess. Because we are still being redeemed from our old nature or that's prone to man's ways in the exercising of our five natural senses. But our service is the sacrificial part of our duty and is married to the ritual part of worship because all is to magnify Yahshua. This is why a soul is called, purified, and separated for the master's use by the Holy Spirit and is given as lights to guide those called of the nations to salvation. Therefore, change is a godly character that is necessary to complete our, care, our task. However, it's not enough to tell us that we must change. So we are taught how to change and are convinced to change due to the evil, uh, 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 our evil indulgences. This is why 
Yahweh visit us for all our sins to bring about changes in our ways and in our thought processes. But if we are not taught to see uh, uh, that all the evils and sorrows that befall us is chastisement, then surely we will never change. And many of our words and actions will show that we are not walking in the spirit of Yahshua. This makes a soul captain of his own ship, master of one's own fate, and one who chooses their own destiny through the counsels of the world. Uh, Deuteronomy chapter 28, I mean chapter 8 rather, and verse 5 through verse 22. Deuteronomy chapter 8 and verse 5 through verse 22. <clears throat> I don't think it's 22 verses in there, brother. And I might be in the wrong book. <laughs> Deuteronomy chapter 8. And pick that uh, uh, Deuteronomy chapter 8. Pick it up at verse uh, 5. Yes, sir. Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 5. Thou shalt also consider in thine heart that as a man chasten his son, so Yahweh your Elohim chasteneth you. Therefore thou shalt keep the commandments of Yahweh thy Elohim to walk in his ways and to fear him. For Yahweh thy Elohim bringeth thee into a good land, a land of brooks of water, of fountains and depths that spring out of valleys and hills, a land of wheat and barley and vines and fig trees and pomegranates, a land of all olives and honey, a land wherein thou shalt eat bread without scarceness, thou shalt not lack anything in it, hmm. a land whose stones are iron and out of whose hills thou mayest dig bread. When thou hast eaten and are full, then thou shalt bless Yahweh thy Elohim for all the good land which he have given thee. Beware that you forget not Yahweh thy Elohim in not keeping his commandments and his judgments and his statutes which I command thee this day. Least when thou have eaten and are full and have built goodly houses and dwell therein, and when thy herds and thy flocks multiply, and thy silver and thy gold is multiplied, and all that you have is multiplied, then your heart be lifted up, and you forget Yahweh your Elohim, which brought you forth out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage, who led thee through that great and terrible wilderness, wherein were fiery serpents and scorpions and drought, where there was no water, who brought thee forth water out of the rock of Flint, who led thee in the wilderness with manna, which thy fathers knew not, that he might humble you, and that he might prove you to do you good at your latter end. Mm -hmm. And you shall, and you say in your heart, My power and the might of mine hand have guided me this well. Mm -hmm. But thou shalt remember Yahweh thy Elohim, for it is he that gives you power to get wealth, that he may establish his covenant, which he swear unto thy fathers, as it is this day. And it shall be, if you do at all forget Yahweh your Elohim, and walk after other gods, and serve them, and worship them, I testify against you this day, that you shall surely perish. As the nations which Yahweh destroyed before your face, so shall you perish, because you would not be obedient unto the voice of Yahweh, your Elohim. Okay, my brother, Ezekiel 34 and verse 6 to verse 31. Ezekiel 34 and verse 6 to verse 31. Ezekiel 34 and verse 6 through verse 31.
verse 6. My sheep wandered through all the mountains and upon every high hill. Yea, my flock was scattered upon all the face of the earth, and none did search or seek after them. Therefore, you shepherds, hear the word of Yahweh. As I live, says the Adonai Elohim, surely because my flock became a prey, and my flock became meat to every beast of the field, because there was no shepherd, neither did my shepherds search for my flock. But the shepherds fed themselves and fed not my flock. Therefore, O oh, you shepherds, hear the word of Yahweh. Thus says the Adonai Elohim, Behold, I am against the shepherds, and I will require my flock at their hand and cause them to cease from feeding the flock. Neither shall the shepherds feed themselves any more, for I will deliver my flock from their mouth that they may not be meat for them. Hmm. For thus says the Adonai Elohim, Behold, I, even I, will both search my sheep and seek them out. Mm -hmm. As a shepherd seeketh out his flock in the day that he is among his sheep that are scattered, so will I seek out my sheep and will deliver them out of all places where they have been scattered in the cloudy and dark day. And I will bring them out from the people and gather them from the countries and will bring them to their own land and feed them upon the mountains of Israel by the rivers and in all the inhabited places of the country. I will feed them in a good pasture, and upon the high mountains of Israel shall their fold be. Thou shall they lie in a good fold, and in a fat pasture shall they feed upon the mountains of Israel. I will feed my flock, and I will cause them to lie down, says the Adonai Elohim. I will seek that which was lost and bring again that which was driven away and will bind up that which was broken and will strengthen that which was sick. But I will destroy the fat and the strong. I will feed them with judgment. Mm -hmm. And as for you, O my flock, thus says the Adonai Elohim, Behold, I judge between cattle and cattle, between the rams and the he goats. Mm -hmm. Seemeth it a small thing unto you to have eaten up the good pastor, but you must tread down with your feet the residue of your pastor, and to have drunk of the deep waters, but you must foul the residue with your feet. And as for my flock, they eat that which you have trodden with your feet, and they drink that which you have fouled with your feet. This is why we have to stay away from even the appearance of sin, because people see us. And you know what? A lot of time, especially y'all lead people, folks see y'all do things, you know what they say? It must be all right when it ain't. See? They'll hear you say something and say, well, that must be the way I got to do it when it's not. Okay. Go ahead and read it, brother. So we have to be careful for that because uh, even the appearance of sin can cause people to stumble. But go ahead and read it, brother. Ezekiel chapter 34, verse 20. Therefore, thus says the Adonai Elohim unto them, Behold, I, even I, will judge between the fat cattle and between the lean cattle. Because you have thrust with side and with shoulder and pushed all the disease with your horns till you have scattered them abroad, therefore will I save my flock, and they shall no more be a prey, and I will judge between cattle and cattle. Mm -hmm. And I will set up one shepherd over them, and he shall feed them, even my servant David. He shall feed them, and he shall be their shepherd. And I, Yahweh, will be their Elohim, and my servant David, a prince among them, I, Yahweh, have spoken it. And I will make with them a covenant of peace, and will cause the evil beasts to cease out of the land. They shall dwell safely in the wilderness and sleep in the woods. And I will make them and the places round about my hill a blessing. And I will cause the shower to come down in his season. There shall be showers of blessing. And the tree of the field shall yield her fruit. And the earth shall yield her increase. And they shall be safe in their land. And shall know that I am Yahweh. When I have broken the bands of their yoke. And delivered them out of the hand of those that serve themselves of them. 
And they shall no more be a prey to the heathen, neither shall the beast of the land devour them, but they shall dwell safely, and none shall make them afraid. And I will raise up for them a plan of renown, and they shall be no more consumed with hunger in the land, neither by the shame of the heathen anymore. Thus shall they know that I, Yahweh, their Elohim, am with them, and that they, even the house of Israel, are my people, says the Adonai Elohim. And you, my flock, the flock of my pastor, are men, and I am your Elohim, says the Adonai Elohim. Well, let's go and see what the prophet Dawid uh, added unto that. Psalms chapter 44 and verse 1 through chapter 48 and verse 14. Psalms chapter 44 and verse 1 through chapter 48 and verse 14. <coughs> Verse 1, we have heard with our ears, O Elohim, our fathers have told us what work thou did of in their days and the times of old. Mm -hmm. How thou did of drive out the heathen with thy hand and planted them, how thou did of afflict the people and cast them out. Mm -hmm. For they got not the land in possession by their own sword, neither did their own arm save them. But your right hand and your arm and the light of your countenance, because you had a favor unto them. Praise God. You are my king, O Elohim. Command deliverances for Yaakov. Through you will we push down our enemies. Through your name will we tread them under that rise up against us. For I will not trust in my bow, neither shall my sword save me. Behold, verse 7, I'm sorry. But thou hast saved us from the, our enemies and has put them to shame that hated us. In Elohim we boast all the day long and praise thy name forever. But thou hast cast off and put us to shame and goeth not forth with our armies. Thou maketh us to turn back from the enemy and they which hate us fall for themselves. Hmm. Thou hast given us like sheep appointed for me and has scattered us among the heathen. Thou sellest thy people for naught, and do not increase your wealth by their price. Mm -hmm. Thou maketh us a reproach to our neighbors, a scorn and a derision to them that are round about us. Mm -hmm. Thou maketh us a byword among the heathen, a shaking of the head among the people. Mm -hmm. My confusion is continually before me, and the shame of my face have covered me for the voice of him that reproaches and blasphemeth by reason of the enemy and avenger. All this is come upon us, yet have we not forgotten you, neither have we dealt falsely in your covenant. Our heart is not turned back, neither have our steps declined from your way. Though you have sore broken us in the place of dragons and covered us with the shadow of death. If we have forgotten the name of our Elohim or stretched out our hands to a strange God, shall not Elohim search this out? For he knoweth the secrets of the heart. Mm -hmm. Yea, for your sake are we killed all the day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Away, why sleepeth thou, O Adonai? Arise, cast us not off forever. Wherefore hideth thou thy face, and forgetteth our affliction and our oppression? For our soul is bowed down to the dust, our belly cleaveth unto the earth. Arise for our help, and redeem us for thy mercy's sake. My heart is indicted a good matter. I speak of the things which I have made touching the king. My tongue is the pen of a ready writer. Thou art fairer than the children of men. Grace is poured into thy lips. Therefore, Elohim, have blessed thee forever. Gird thy sword upon thy fire, O most mighty, with thy glory and thy majesty. And in thy majesty ride prosperously because of truth and meekness and righteousness 
and thy right hand shall teach thee terrible things. Thine arrows are sharp in the heart of the king's enemies, whereby the people fall under thee. Thou throne, O Elohim, is forever and ever. The scepter of thy kingdom is a right scepter. Thou loveth righteousness and hateth wickedness. Therefore, Elohim, your Elohim, have anointed thee with the oil of gladness above thy fellows. All thy garments smell of myrrh and aloes and cassia out of the ivory palaces whereby they have made thee glad. King's daughters were among thy honorable women. Upon thy right hand did stand the queen in gold of Ophir. Hearken, O daughter. And consider, and incline thine ear, forget also thine own people and thy father's house. So shall the king greatly desire thy beauty, for he is thy Adonai, and worship thou him. And the daughter of Tyre shall be thou with the gift. Even the rich among the people shall entreat thy favor. The king's daughter is all glorious within. Her clothing is a wroth gold. She shall be brought unto the king in raiment of needlework. The virgins, her companions that follow her, shall be brought unto thee. With gladness and rejoicing shall they be brought. They shall enter into the king's palace. Instead of thy father shall be thy children, whom thou mayest make princes in all the earth. I will make thy name to be remembered in all generations. Therefore shall the people praise thee forever and ever. Elohim is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore will we not fear, though the earth be removed, and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, though the waters thereof roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with the swelling thereof. There is a river, the streams whereof shall make glad the city of Elohim, the holy place of the tabernacles of the Most High. Elohim is in the midst of her, she shall not be moved. Elohim shall help her, and that right early. The heathen raged, the kingdoms were moved, he uttered his voice, the earth melted. Yahweh of hosts is with us. The Elohim of Jacob is our refuge. Come, behold the works of Yahweh, what desolations he have made in the earth. Hmm. He make a wars to cease unto the end of the earth. He break up the bow and cut up the spear in sunder. He burn up the chariot in the fire. Be still and know that I am Elohim. I will be exalted among the heathen. I will be exalted in the earth. Yahweh of hosts is with us. The Elohim of Jacob is our refuge. Mm -hmm. Psalms 47, verse 1. Oh, clap your hands, all you people. Shout unto Yahweh with the voice of triumph. For Yahweh most high is terrible. He is a great king over all the earth. He shall subdue the people under us and the nations under our feet. He shall choose our inheritance for us the excellency of Jacob, whom he loved. Elohim has gone out with a shout. Yahweh with the sound of a trumpet. Sing praises to Elohim. Sing praises. Sing praises unto our king. Sing praises. For Elohim is the king of all the earth. Sing you praises with understanding. Hmm. Elohim reigneth over the heathen. Elohim sitteth upon the throne of his holiness. The princes of the people are gathered together, even the people of the Elohim of Abraham. For the shields of the earth belongs unto Elohim. He is greatly exalted. Amen. Great is Yahweh, and greatly to be praised in the city of our Elohim, and the mountain of his holiness. Beautiful for situation, the joy of the whole earth is Mount Sion, on the sides of the north, the city of the great king. Elohim is known in her palaces for a refuge. Below, the kings were assembled. They passed by together. They saw it, and so they marveled. They were troubled and hasted away. Fear took hold upon them there, and pain as of a woman in travail. 
thou breaketh the ships of Tarshish with an east wind. As we have heard, so have we seen in the city of Yahweh of hosts, in the city of our Elohim. Elohim will establish it forever. We have thought of thy loving kindness, O Elohim, in the midst of thy temple. According to thy name, O Elohim, so is thy praise unto the ends of the earth. Thy right hand is full of righteousness. Let Mount Sion rejoice. Let the daughters of Yehuda be glad because of your judgment. Walk about Zion and go round about her. Count the towers thereof. Come she. Verse 10. According to thy name, O Elohim, so is thy praise unto the ends of the earth. Thy right hand is full of righteousness. Let Mount Sion rejoice. Let the daughters of Yehuda be glad because of thy judgments. Walk about Zion and go round about her. Count the towers thereof. Mark you well her bulwarks. Consider her palaces that you may tell it to the generations following. For this Elohim is our Elohim forever and ever. He will be our guide even unto death. Okay, my brother, let's go and see what one of the prophets of the captivity of the Babylonian captivity had to say about that. Let's go to the prophet Zechariah. <clears throat> Zechariah chapter 12 and verse 1 to chapter 13 and verse 9. Zechariah chapter 12 and 1 to chapter 13 and verse 9. You know, yeah, all this that we read, I can really identify with it. Matthew set up, New Covenant, everything been set up. You know, righteousness is going to be the stability of the time. Mm -hmm. Makes a lot of sense, don't it? Sure does. Instead of flying it's up make, to heaven. It makes it make better sense than going up to heaven, sitting down for a thousand years, and then getting up walking for a thousand years, <laughs> then standing in front of the th throne for a thousand years, saying, holy, 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 holy. Makes a whole lot of sense, don't it? Mm -hmm. Right. That's why y'all be told us, man, y'all leave them heathens alone. <laughs> don't learn his way. That's why he separated us from other nations. But we don't like separation. We do not like to be separated from the nation. You know why? We really don't, in this captivity, we really don't want nothing of our own. We want what we have to be shared among the Euro Gentiles. Mm -hmm. yeah. Like you say, that's the God in us. Hey, brother. Just a loving people. Don't you, what, what you think that civil rights movement was? Wasn't that wasn't that, that integration being married to another God? Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, we weren't married to him. We just become, we became like I said, live-in bridesmaid, <laughs> 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 knowing all the time that this is our enemy, and eventually they gonna let us know I'm your enemy. Mm -hmm. Ain't no doubt about it. Don't you know who? That's our, our Jake's problem. Jake never sees who his enemies are, right. see? Because his enemies say, oh, yeah, we love everybody. Mm. Right. When the rubber hits the road, we're going to find out what side of the tracks he stands on. Mm. Then you stand up there with the egg over your face. I was in all evil in the midst of the congregation. Mm. Right. Mm. Right. Now you go to your lovers. Mm. Yeah. Well, it's not Jake, it's CBS's, they're cockasaurs in black skin, and they get among you, and then they <laughs> trick you, and just like they did these, these seven brothers. It was one of our own came among them and, and caught them in their plot. Brother, who do you think the Gentiles will send, send around the spy on us? You right. think they're going to send some Gentiles? I mean, stick out like a sore thumb. They're going to send somebody, those who we trust. See? Those who are going to make friends with us. But I don't know whether y'all noticed it or not, but before, when they first flashed that on about uh, 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 what was going on in Miami, <clears throat> they only talked about it for a minute. And then you know what happened? Anderson Cooper went into that whole rundown with Yahweh being Yahweh. And then he ended up talking about how they terrorized Liberty City in, in Miami, which they did do. And then they went into talking about these brothers, and this nut stands up there 
See, that's why I tell you, y'all need to watch how y'all roll up y'all hair and everything. Because when y'all get to rolling up y'all hair, stuff, it must do something to niggas' brains. You see? Because you see how he stood up there, and what did he get to talking about? Well, yeah, the guy said, you affiliated with anybody else? No, but well, we, you know, we just worshiping, and we just so-and-so and so-and-so. Well, uh, are you affiliated with Al-Qaeda? Well, no, we have, you know, I don't know, and, and blah, blah, blah. But we, we affiliate with them guys in Chicago, and they busted them the same day, didn't they? Didn't he? See? Niggas don't know when to keep their mouth shut, see? Niggas don't know when you get around white folks, man, you have to be quiet. You know why? They're going to pick you for everything they want, right? You know why? They know that you, they, you are their enemy. They know that eventually they're going to have to either uh, destroy us or conform to us. And guess what? They ain't going to want to do that, brother. There ain't nobody, ain't no white folks want to be no niggas. Now you can believe that. See, we want to be white folks, but they don't want to be no niggas. You see, but like uh, Yahweh said, look up on all the high mountains and see where you haven't been laid with you. Don't laid in bed with everybody. Yeah, you done took everything I gave you and you give it to your friends. Uh, where you at, man? Zechariah chapter twelve, verse one. Yeah. yeah. Verse one. The burden of the word of Yahweh, for Israel, says Yahweh, which stretches forth the heavens and lay up the foundation of the earth and formeth the spirit of man within him. Hmm. Behold, I will make Jerusalem a cup of trembling unto all the people round about when they shall be in the siege, both against Yehuda and against Jerusalem. The problem with us, we don't, right now, we don't understand when we're under siege. See? We don't understand who we're under siege. Ever since the civil rights movement, we've been under siege. And we just have we haven't understood it. You know why? Our enemies say, hey, I like you. I don't have no problem against well, against blacks. I'm looking around. What the hell is he talking about? I ain't no black. I'm a Hebrew Israelite. So who are you talking about? Oh, so you don't have problems against blacks, but you got problems against Hebrew Israelites. Okay, I understand why. I don't know who they be talking about when they be talking about that, but I know what we answer to, though. We answer to anything Massachusetts called us this day. Yeah. You know why? We don't care, man. Jake don't care about nothing. Jake does not care about anything. Jake lets the hair go with the hide as long as Jake can partially do some of the things that they want to do. Mm -hmm. yeah. Elder, uh, with this, uh, you know, with it. Most of our people, like you're saying, uh, in the high 90s, most of our people in this country don't even know the culture, right? Of course not. And, you know, the breaking down of the family structure and, and, you know, no men in the house raising these kids, we are on the siege, right? Of course we are. Man, Lucifer, we not, straight. man Lucifer, we don't know it yet, man, because we're so busy trying to, to fornicate with this world, man. Mm -hmm. But Lucifer is out to destroy us down to the very man any way that we allow him to do it. And that's how we get destroyed. We allow Lucifer to destroy us. You know, like the scripture said, we taught our enemies to rule, how to rule over us. Mm -hmm. And we do it every day. We do it every day. We continue to teach our enemies how to rule over us. You know why? We don't walk in the righteousness of God 24-7. We walk in it when it's convenient. When it's not convenient, we take that arm and throw it over in that corner. So I'm going to do the sin now. Right. Then we were thought the spirit. You know, brother, back in 69 in January. I was preparing to go to Germany. I was in the military. And at that point in time, I no longer wanted to be called a Negro. And I protested. And, uh, of course, I thought being black was better. <laughs> and from that day forward, from that day until I got out of service, I was under surveillance because I protested being called a Negro and made a big thing out of it. Of course. And if you're doing anything to the glory of God out in the streets, among folks that you, that you fellowship with, guess what? They're watching you too. I made it known that I was not going to fight. You know, during those, the time of the riots and everything, we was training to uh, use those bayonets against our brother. I made it clear that I wasn't going to be using no bayonet on my brother. And I told the white boy, I said, I don't care about you or your people. He looked and he said, he said, I understand how you feel, but they didn't waste any time getting me up on out of there. Of course not, of course not brother. You don't conform to the military system. 
So why would they keep you in there? Friend of mine, brother, he told us, I ain't going in the service. They said, yes, you are. You're going to jail. So he went on. They tried to issue him a rifle. He wouldn't take it. In the mornings when they blew, blew, blew reveille, yeah. they had to come empty that brother out the bed. <laughs> he wouldn't do nothing that they wanted him to do. So what they did was gave him a, it stayed in there about four months. They put him in the guardhouse for three of them. And you know what they ended up doing, brother? Giving that brother a, 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 a voluntary discharge. Yeah. They got rid of that brother, man. You know why? He wouldn't conform. Right. And the same thing that Lucifer is going to do to us in this country here, because see, we, in mass, the ch uh, are going to conform. But the children that do know their God, we are not going to conform. And you know what's going to happen, brother? They're going to try to murder us all. Mm -hmm. You know why? We know the truth. And guess who our enemies be? <laughs> See? Them same brothers that came up in here, stayed up a couple of years, and think they knew something. Them still, didn't we just hear a brother on the... Uh, Somebody called in on one of the brothers' show this week and uh, last week and asked him uh, about Hebrew congregation. He told me, said, well, if you want to know the word, go over on uh, at 3901A Covington Highway. But I want you to know that they are cult. <laughs> All Hebrew Israelite groups in the city are cults. See? So who our enemies be? Our enemies be the, the ones that you fellowship with. See, our enemies be the one that claim to walk in the spirit of Yahshua. And you, but know how you know them? Because they walk in that spirit when it's convenient. And when it's not convenient, you be looking around and say, where is your armor? Where is your armor? You walk around here naked, where is your armor? I left that stuff home, I don't need that till after 5 o'clock. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. People just like when the guy finals, people they be watching the same man that's speaking against you. Right. Well, what are you talking about your people? Right. Right. I know, brother. I know, brother. See, folks don't folks don't follow fools, man. People watch. People look at what come out your mouth, and then they hang around to see what you're doing. And when you're always down in some other brothers and so forth, folks are wondering what's wrong with this brother here. You mean to tell me you stayed over there 18 years? 18 years in a car? Then we had one brother showed up down here last week. Then again, uh, well, week before last. And then the last time he showed down, he was so sick, looked like he was going to fall out. Then the next thing you know, back in the hospital. You know why? He, Yahweh gave him an opportunity to, to deal with holy things. And he, took, he utilized that gift. And then what happened? Because of what I don't believe. Because of what? I don't interpret. Why are you still a babe? Keep sitting in that seat there. Yes, keep sitting in that seat. Well, I don't believe this, so I'm going to go and I'm going to follow the imagination of my own heart and the brother back in the hospital with the same thing he had in the beginning. See? Let me tell you something. These blessings Yahweh give us, we can do what we want to do with them, but believe one thing. Eventually, he's going to turn them right back on you. You know why? You sure and you appreciate them. Okay. Uh, where you at, man? Zechariah chapter 12, verse 2. Okay. Verse 2. Behold, I will make Jerusalem a cup of trembling unto all the people round about when they shall be in the siege both against Yehuda and against Jerusalem. Now he's talking about all of the nations, all the seeds upon the face of the earth, right? These are the same seeds that we see every day. Then someone want to ask me, hey, God, we're giving a party. You want to go? Hell no. Huh? Y'all ain't told me don't fellowship with y'all. This already, you know, I'll see you. Bye. You know, you can let me have that $100. <laughs> you know, but I ain't going there. No, no, no. Y'all ain't already told me I'm going to get in trouble if I go there. Go on to read, bro. Verse 3. And in that day will I make Jerusalem a burdensome stone for all people. All that burden themselves with it shall be cut in pieces, though all the people of the earth be gathered together against it. Hmm. And that day, says Yahweh, I will smite every horse with astonishment and his rider with madness. And I will open mine eyes upon the house of Yehuda, and will smite every horse of the people with blindness. And the governors of Yehuda shall say in their heart, 
The inhabitants of Jerusalem shall be my strength in Yahweh of hosts, their Elohim. And that day will I make the governors of Yehuda like a hearth of fire among the woods. That's you men of Israel sitting up in here. Y'all the governors of Judah. Wasn't Judah brought over here? Mm-hmm. Were you the governors of Judah? And this is what, the, what Yahweh the Spirit is strengthening you to have power to do right now, but you got to have on that armor. Go ahead and read. Yes, sir. If you let somebody take your armor, you're supposed to die. I mean, that was given to you by, this, by the Holy Spirit. And you're going to let somebody else take it, you're supposed to die. Go on and read, brother. Verse 6. In that day will I make the governors of Yehuda like a hearth of fire among the wood, and like a torch of fire in a sheath, and they shall devour all the people round about, on the right hand and on the left, and Jerusalem shall be inhabited again in her own place, even in Jerusalem. Yahweh also shall save the tents of Yehuda first, that the glory of the house of Dawid and the glory of the inhabitants of Jerusalem do not magnify themselves against Yehuda. Have y'all have y'all been have y'all heard too much about any uh, any brothers over in Europe and Asia that's dealing with what we're dealing with? Mm-hmm. Huh? No. Glory, yeah. Oh, I was just saying we've been reading a lot about Yahweh bringing us back out of the lands of our captivity, but this is saying that we're not gonna just walk in there. We gotta take it. You gotta take it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's what you did. Uh uh. Uh, what, what, what my brother Esau say, Esau said, I'm putting my whole arm on spiritual warfare. I got trouble on. <laughs> See? And who my enemies be? The same one to saying, well, you know, it's okay. <laughs> yeah. Same one to tell us. I remember back uh, in, 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 in the 50s. Man, when uh, no, it wasn't in the 50s. That was in uh, in 79. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll talk about that next week. Uh, talk about that next week. I got some things next week that need to fit in. Uh, go ahead and read. Steve. Let's talk in Europe. No, okay, I'm just having you remember. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just having you remember. I thought it got tied to Okay. Oh, what I was saying. Right. <laughs> 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 Let's talk in Europe. 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 let us didn't it say the men of Judah of his present plan? Well, what's y'all's problem? Man, I sit around and watch. Man, you know, brothers used to come around and talk about what, what we allow our women to do and what our women is doing. Man, we've been trying to put together three businesses for five months. For five whole months. And you know what niggas doing? Partying and walking around with chicken hanging out their mouth. You know why? They ain't got on their armor. See, they, you see, brothers think this is something you can deal with it like you want to. No, you can't. You got to deal with it like it's got to be done. Because if you don't, guess what? Pretty soon, y'all ain't going to have somebody sitting in that same seat you sitting in. We got a job to do, and we got a whole lot of time to be playing these little, these little bitchy games that brothers like to play. You know, so, you know, y'all, we need to get ourselves in order. It's things that we set up here and said in, 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 uh, uh, in meeting. That's why I stopped having meeting with all the brothers. Because we set up here and said we was going to do things in meeting, and then what happened? Brothers, back up. Yeah. Uh, go on and read, brother. Yes, sir. Zechariah chapter 12. Verse 7, Yahweh also shall save the tents of Yehuda first, that the glory of the house of David and the glory of the inhabitants of Jerusalem do not magnify themselves against Yehuda. 
In that day shall Yahweh defend the inhabitants of Jerusalem, and he that is fever among them at that day shall be as David, and the house of David shall be as Elohim, as the angel of Yahweh before them. And it shall come to pass in that day that I will seek to destroy all the nations that come against Jerusalem. Hmm. And I will pour upon the house of David and upon the inhabitants of Jerusalem the spirit of grace and of supplication. Praise God. And they shall look upon me whom they have pierced, hmm. and they shall mourn for him as one mourner for his only son, and shall be in bitterness for him as one that is in bitterness for his firstborn. In that day shall there be a great morning in Jerusalem as the morning of Hadad Ramon in the valley of Megiddo. And the land shall mourn every family apart, the family of the house of David apart and their wives apart, mm. the family of the house of Jonathan apart and their wives apart, the family of the house of Levi apart and their wives apart, the family of Shimei apart and their wives apart, all the families that remain, every family apart, and their wives apart. Right. Time for separation. Time to go into the sanctuary of the God of Israel. Go ahead and read, brother. Zechariah chapter 13, verse 1. In that day there shall be a fountain open to the house of David and to the inhabitants of Jerusalem for sin and for uncleanness. And it shall come to pass in that day, says Yahweh of hosts, that I will cut off the names of the idols out of the land, and they shall no more be remembered. And also I will cause the prophets and the unclean spirit to pass out of the land. And it shall come to pass that when any shall yet prophesy, then his father and his mother that begot him shall say unto him, You shall not live. For you speak lies in the name of Yahweh, and his father and his mother that begot him shall thrust him through when he prophesied. Right. If we was living in our land under our culture, when folks get off in their mess, it's easy to stop sin. Mm -hmm. Easy. All you got to do, they can stop most of the sin here in America. All they got to do is start springing up folks on them trees out there like they hang folks in the, in the public square and let them hang up there. Mm -hmm. See? The we was in our land, folks get folks wouldn't a whole lot of folks wouldn't be getting down too wrong if we kept the law. You know why? We go out there and make a rock pile out of them. Stop that hanging out on the corners and behind the liquor stores. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> Stop coming out here bringing all them damn beer bottles and everything. Yeah. Don't read, bro. Verse four. Verse. And it shall come to pass in that day that the prophet shall be ashamed every one of his vision when he hath prophesied. Neither shall they wear a rough garment to deceive, but he shall say, I am no prophet, I am a farmer. For man taught me to keep cattle from my youth. Hmm. And one shall say unto him, What are these wounds in thine hands? <laughs> then shall he answer, Those with which I was wounded in the house of my friends. Awake, O sword, against my shepherd and against the man that is my fellow, says Yahweh of hosts. Smite the shepherd, and the sheep shall be scattered, and I will turn mine hand upon the little mm -hmm. one. And it shall come to pass that in all the land, says Yahweh, two parts therein shall be cut off and die, but the third shall be left therein. Now, he said he was going to turn his hand on the little ones, right? That's the children of the bride, right? And of the children of the bride, in all the land, two parts is going to be cut off and die. You know why? Jake don't care nothing about y'all. Jake don't care. Jake care about Jake. Go ahead. Man. Last verse 9. And I will bring the third part through the fire, and we'll refine them as silver is refined, and will try them as gold is tried. They shall call on my name, and I will hear them. I will say, it is my people, and they shall say, Yahweh is my Elohim. Praise Yah. The Almighty of Israel cannot lie because lying is sin. So he gave our fathers oracles which are ways of love and peace, which shows our righteousness, and bring forth uh, his blessings. But all of his blessings are not just for the Hebrews alone, but to be shared 
for the betterment of all the seeds of Noah, mm -hmm. who hears Yisrael. Mm -hmm. But why this great grace to all the seed? Because according to Romans 11, the nations inherited all, the, all of their power because our fathers fell down on the job. Mm -hmm. Therefore, Israel is, is, is the reason for all the sins of all the nations today. And being the children of Israel, but being the children of Israel, living in the world today and being nourished in, in the Holy Spirit of truth, we see that the ways of man is destroying everything that Yahweh Elohim said was good in his sight. So we plainly see the holy prophets being made manifest as the ways of man is destroying all the things created to sustain life. But what we learn is the terrible harm that sin does to a family, a nation, and uh, the whole creature. Mm -hmm. And it breeds only self-pleasure, pain and sorrow of mind, and imminent de uh, destruction. Mm -hmm. Therefore, the saints are set in the world in these wicked times to gather Israel first and to gather the nations to be spared during the great tribulation period. Let me give you all some scripture to read because I've been up here for a minute. Uh, uh, Psalms chapter 1 and verse 1 through chapter 2 and verse 12. Chapter 14 and verse 1 through chapter 15 and verse 5. And he says chapter 44 verse 21 through verse uh, I think we're going to read that piece, though. Uh, Isaiah, now let's go ahead and read uh, Isaiah chapter 44 and verse 21 through verse 23. Yeah, ain't got the place. Can't stand up here too long. Now my back getting a whole lot of problems. Folks get old, boy. Like I keep telling folks, the more I brush my hair, the more face I have to wash. <laughs> <laughs> Falling apart, boy. Tell you something, this tabernacle is this tabernacle is going down. Yeah, it ain't nothing you can do to prop it up. You know, take all kind of medicine, do all kind of jogging and whatever, and it when it get ready to fall down, this bad boy falls down, and ain't nothing you can do about it. Uh, you walking down the street, start walking sideways. Whoa, whoa, what, what's up? <laughs> Equilibrium be going off. Yeah, Lucifer got me wide open, Jack. Yeah, I know. I'm glad the God of Israel uh, uh, keeps my sanity and keeps me going, though, brother. You know, that's why I try to stay up on my job, man. So he has reason uh, to show it, to make his face to shine upon me from time to time. Uh, Isaiah chapter 44 and verse 21 through verse 23. Remember these, O Yaakov and Israel, for thou art my servant. I have formed thee. Thou art my servant. O Israel, thou shalt not be forgotten of me. Praise God. I have blotted out as a thick cloud thy transgressions, and as a cloud thy sins. Return unto me, for I have redeemed thee. Hmm. Sing, O you heavens, for Yahweh have done it. Shout, you lower parts of the earth. Break forth <laughs> into singing, you mountains, O forests, and every tree therein. For Yahweh had redeemed Jacob and glorified himself in Israel. Right. And how does he glorify us to giving us of his Holy Spirit? This is why we have to let our light so shine before men that they will see our good work and glorify our Father in heaven. Because man don't know how to see where to seek the truth. Man don't know where the truth is, what the truth is all about. So why do you think Yahweh teach us? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, El, I was listening to some uh, things the other day. And it just made me think about, you know, how blessed I've been. And, you know, people talking about why we have these divorce rates among our people mm -hmm. and why the brothers jumping on the sisters and beating the sisters up and doing stuff they shouldn't be doing. But it's like like it's been said, we assimilated into another society, into mm -hmm. we've taken on the ways of other people. And what works for one people won't work for another people, especially the whole seed. Of course not. We built different. Right. We got different rules and regulation to govern right. us by, man. So, you know, uh, why you think Yahweh, Yahweh gave us this holy culture? And But what did he tell us? Learn not the ways of strangers because they're vain. He said, I'm going to put you in captivity under a cruel law, a part of that nasty nation. 
Learn not his ways. Ain't that what he told us? Walk down the street. But if I was listening. All you gotta do is walk down the street. The lady she, that was on the program happened to be some kind of apostle or preacher or whatever. And the first thing that came out about this thing, you know, it, it, it tells us about separating and, you know, uh, not defrauding each other except to be with uh, consent and come together again mm -hmm. when you're having problems. But the first thing come out of this lady's mouth, divorce. Right. And check this out. I heard uh, a brother say on the radio the, uh, the other day that in 2015, just about every time, every church you go into, Go have a woman, a woman preach. Mm -hmm. Check that out. Okay. <laughs> you know, it's only people that's got their eyes closed can't see you. The difference between us and the other nation. Uh, a typical example, and you see how how, how nude uh, white folks like to be. And I came to the conclusion many years ago that uh, uh, you know it's hard to, 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 to differentiate between uh, black folks. Cause you can have, uh, you can be penniless, and the way you dress make you look like you got a million dollars. Mm -hmm. And I came to the conclusion that because of Yahweh's grace and His mercy that He has shed up on us, uh, uh, black folks was made for clothes, and clothes have to be made for white folks. When I was living up in Syracuse, New York, man, we used to go up, uh, we used to go up, uh, 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 uh on the other side of the lake up there, on the other side of Lake Onondaga, them crackers had a bunch of woods up there, right? Man, we used to get in, in the canoe and paddle down the river and paddle right through their nudist colony. Mm -hmm. I believe it. Right through their nudist colony. See? Like you said, they have to make white, uh, clothes for white folks. <laughs> You know, they, we can get anything off the shelf and look good in it. Of course. We can get a cowboy shirt and make it look good on them. But these white folks, and now they've made some, some pants up on white women. They got two different sizes. They got a size for the waist and one for the bottom. And them things running over $100 some dollars. And they jumping in the system of jumping in. Call them coochie cutters. <laughs> <laughs> That's what they call them. Daisy Dukes. See, all of that mess came about doing uh, 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 1979, brother. Uh, that's when, uh, you know, Woodstock. doing it. Yeah, that, that. Woodstock, right? All of them white girls walking around out there, running around in, in the bushes and everything, naked and so forth and so on, right? Right, right. And uh, uh, your ex-president was there. Oh, yes, Bill McClinton. Yeah, see? Right, Slick Willie. He was there, and so was John Kerry. You see what I mean? Now them folks are in office, right? But look who they're pushing, brother. You know who they're getting ready to push now? Now, they tried it once before, but it didn't work. They tried Geraldine Ferraro. Yeah, oh, yeah, they're getting rid of Hillary. That didn't work. Now, they're going to get behind Hillary and push her. See, uh, uh, they know what happened back, uh, uh, something else that happened in 79, too. Uh, Margaret Thatcher became the most powerful woman on the face of the earth. Mm -hmm. See? Right? Nobody told that woman what to do. You know what they call her? The Iron Maid Maggie. You know why? She ruled with an iron fist, you see. But then when you look at the things that they allowed to go on in France and in Germany and so forth in those areas at that time, you can very well see that the white folks were still off into the same thing they've always been off into. Do you know that... Uh, to show you, uh, uh, and not just the women, but the men. Do you know, brother, that uh, when they first started the Olympics, the men used to fight them, fight the Olympics uh, naked? Hmm? Right. Folks love, white folks love that nakedness, brother. And we love white folks. <laughs> uh, go on and uh, finish up, uh, brother. We talking about style. Damn them styles. You better worry about what your God told you. That was it, yeah. One sister I talked to, you know what she told me, man? She told me, say, well, these are women pants. Okay. Huh? Zip on them, right? Huh? If they got two long legs on them, they belong to men. Okay. Okay, uh, 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 where, where I told you to go, man? 21 through 23, we read them. Oh, you read that? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, 
Serving Yahshua our God, King High Priest, is not just the things we do in utilizing the gifts we are, uh, we are and possess, like I've said before. Because we know that we are still being redeemed from a nature that's prone to man's ways. Mm -hmm. But our service is the sacrifice. I need to say this again so you understand where I'm coming from. But our service is the sacrifice and ritual part of our worship. This is why if we sow in, uh, 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 impartiality, so shall we reap. And if we sow in spiritual things while choosing to walk in, in the ways and customs of, of, of the sons of men, we shall reap corruption. Then, through self-destruction, a soul seems to never find the need to approach the throne of grace in mind, uh, uh, a grace in, 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 in the mind of the spirit of truth. But that's because being self-willed and deceived, we have nothing to talk to Yahweh our Elohim about. Mm -hmm. uh, but let's hear the conclusion of this matter. He says, chapter 61 and verse 1 through chapter 62 and verse 12. He says, chapter 61 and verse 1 through chapter 62 and verse 12. I know a lot of times I say things that get on some of y'all nerves. Guess what? I don't care. You know why I don't care? When I go before the throne of grace, you know what I want my, you know what I want my God to say? You did what I told you to do. You say, you warned them for me. And ever since you know me, I've been teaching you his word, and I've been warning you, y'all, we going to get you? See, we get the way we think we sliding by because we don't think the things that's coming up, up on us in our lives is chastisement. You see, we waiting to fall down and break a leg or something. No. Nah. No, uh, 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 expensive gifts come in little packages. Okay, Isaiah chapter sixty-one and verse one through chapter sixty-two and verse twelve. The spirit of the Adonai Elohim is upon me, because Yahweh have anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. He have sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of the prison to them that are bound to proclaim the acceptable year of Yahweh and the day of vengeance of our Elohim, to comfort all that mourn, to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion, to give unto them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they might be called the trees of righteousness, the planting of Yahweh, that he might be glorified. Hmm. And they shall build the oasis, they shall raise up the form of desolations, and they shall repel the waste cities, the desolations of many generations. And strangers shall stand and feed your flocks, and the sons of the alien shall be your plowmen and your vine dressers. But you shall be named the priest of Yahweh. Men shall call you the ministers of our Elohim. You shall eat the wealth of the Euro Gentiles, and in their glory shall you boast yourself. For your shame you shall have double, and for confusion they shall rejoice in their portion. Therefore in their land they shall possess the double, everlasting joy shall be unto them. Praise Yah. For I, Yahweh, love judgment. I hate robbery for burnt offering, and I will direct that work in truth, and I will make an everlasting covenant with them. And their seed shall be known among the Euro Gentiles and their offspring among the people. All that see them shall acknowledge them that they are the seed which Yahweh have blessed. Mm -hmm. I will greatly rejoice in Yahweh. My soul shall be joyful in my Elohim. For he have clothed me with the garments of salvation. He have covered me with the robe of righteousness as a bridegroom decketh himself with ornaments, and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. Why? Because he said, and I looked, and there was no man, and there was no intercessor. And then I said, lo, here I am, in the volume of a book is written of me to do your will, O Elohim, so that Jacob can be redeemed. Well, we have to do the same thing. We call ourselves followers of Yahshua. Okay, go ahead, brother. 
verse 11. For as the earth brings forth her bud, and as the garden causes the things that are sown in it to spring forth, so the Adonai Elohim will cause righteousness and praise to spring forth before all the nations. For Yehuda's sake will I not hold my peace, and for Jerusalem's sake I will not rest until the righteousness thereof go forth as brightness and the salvation thereof as a lamp that burneth. And the Euro Gentiles shall see thy righteousness and all kings thy glory. And thou shall be called by a new name which the mouth of Yahweh shall name. Thou shalt also be a crown of glory in the hand of Yahweh mm. and a royal diadem in the hand of thy Elohim. Preparation is being made for that right now. That's why you're being taught the things of righteousness. I don't care what you think about it. See, one and one still says two to me. You can interpret it any way you want to. You can take it and twist it around a thousand times and next week, I'm going to be still talking about the same doggone thing, whether you like it or not. If you want salvation, because y'all know how we are. You got to drum things in the Jake head. Jake don't believe his doo-doo stink. <laughs> Go on to read, man. Verse 4. Thou shalt no more be turned forsaken, neither shall thy land any more be turned desolate, but thou shalt be called Hepzibah, and thy land Beulah, for Yahweh delights in you, and your land shall be married. For as a young man marries a virgin, so shall thy sons marry thee. And as the bridegroom rejoices over the bride, so shall thy Elohim rejoice over you. I have set watchmen upon thy walls, O Jerusalem, which shall never hold their peace day nor night. You that make mention of Yahweh, keep not silence and give him no rest till he establish and till he make Jerusalem a praise in the earth. Praise Yah. Yahweh have sworn by his right hand and by the arm of his strength. Surely I will no more give your corn to be meat for your enemies, and the son of, sons of the strangers shall not drink your wine for the which you have labored, but they that have gathered it shall eat it and praise Yahweh, and they that have brought it together shall drink it in the courts of my holiness. So we're drinking wine in the church, huh, brother? They've always drank wine in church. Well, what problem Christians got with it? Well, you know, you know, you know, you know, folks, you know them folks do, brother. They like to, they like to make clean the outside mm -hmm. of the church, uh, uh, of the cup, when they go to church on Sunday, mm -hmm. right? Right. But during the week, they walk around with their neck and it's hanging all out. You know how they do things. Okay, go ahead. Verse ten. Go through, go through the gates. Prepare you the way of the people. Cast up, cast up the highway. Gather out the stones. Lift up a standard for the people. Behold, Yahweh hath proclaimed unto the end of the world. Say you to the daughter of Yehuda, Behold, your salvation comes. Behold, his reward is with him and his work before him. And they shall call them the holy people, the redeemed of Yahweh. And thou shalt be called, sought out a city, not forsaken. Hallelujah. Praise Yahweh. And may Yahweh have the blessings to us all. That's about all I'm going to do today. And may Yahweh have mercy upon us all. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.